Okay, last question on this question paper. So it says, while in Australia, Kia Tumete studied the inflation rate. The, answer, the attached answer sheet, so make sure that you have that, shows graphs and data regarding the monthly inflation rate for 2017 and 2018 in Australia. The graph is incomplete. However, the 2018 graph is complete. It says use the answer sheet and answer the questions that follow. So the first thing says, please complete the five missing bars for 2017 on the answer sheet. So what I've done is I've done a bit of this already, right? But I'm gonna show you what you need to do. Firstly, put in these two pieces of information, please do not forget those, that's very important. Then what I did is I said, okay, I'm finding it a little bit difficult to see which bar is which. So I went and I colored in all the ones. So these were the ones that were drawn, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We know five were outstanding. I've drawn them in, but I'm going to indicate to you how I did that. So firstly, I said 2017 are all going to be in pink, and you're welcome to do that. So all of these numbers here are the numbers that you need to plot. They said that 2018 had been plotted in completion, right, or completely, right? So we don't have to look at 2018. We're only going to be looking at 2017. So here it's plotted. Here we need to plot in 2.74. So go up here, 2.74 is halfway between those two numbers. Plot a little point there and then draw a bar down. Do that then for March with 2.38, April for 2.2, September for 2.23, and October for 2. Not October, sorry, for November with 2.2. So you just go plot that in. Easy marks, right? Make sure that you are doing it correctly. Use the highlights if you want to. The top of your graph should actually be flat. So I have not done this particularly well. Make sure you use a ruler, right, just to help you there. But the color is also helpful. Okay, perfect. Let's now go on to the next question. So the next question says, Comparing 2017 with 2018, state the month in which the difference in the inflation rate was the greatest and calculate the difference. So now what I've done is I've also done this just to save time in the video because I don't want you to see me doing calculations and calculations and calculations. What I've done is for each of these, I've said the 2017 number minus the 2018 number. Now that might not be the best way of doing it, right? But that's just how I did it necessarily right, or how I, I, I chose to do it, and I've done that for each and every single one of these um, months, okay, so you see I've written the differences here at the bottom, okay, what did it say for the question, it said comparing the two, state the month with the greatest difference, and what that difference is, so Generally, when you look at inflation difference, you would say 2018 minus 2017, but the way that I've done it is fine. You're still looking for the largest number in absolute terms, right? So even when you have these negatives, it's still talking about a difference. And if you look across here, the largest difference between the two is going to be June. So then when you write your answer, don't say 2017 minus 2018. Say this number, 2018 minus 2017. The calculations we did were still helpful, right? But let's make sure that we write it so that there's no negative numbers because I know that that often confuses students, right? In this case, it shouldn't be confusing. It's literally saying, what is the numerical difference between the two numbers? So make sure that you write that down. Okay, so for 4.2.1, you've done it on the graph, right? So you can just say on graph. Um, for 4.2.2, we're going to say it's in June, as I showed you. And then you're going to say the 2018 amount, which is 2.87 minus or subtract to uh, 1.63. The difference there is 1.24%, right? And I could be saying, oh, how do we know that it's a percent? Well, we know that interest rates are percentages, right? They're percentages. So you need to remember that also when it comes to inflation because it doesn't explicitly say. Well, it does actually. Okay. Okay actually says over here, so I'm talking nonsense. It does say, so you just need to read your graph, right? Do the difference the way I did. If you wanna do it where you're saying 2018 minus um, uh, 2017, you can also do that, but you'll still get to the same answer. Okay, let's do our very last question of this paper, and then we should be one on our way. 4.2.3 says, Kia Tumetsue noted the trend in inflation rate from the end of October to the end of December. He then stated that a car costing 156831,36 Australian dollars at the end of October 2018 would cost 6,500 
Australian dollars more in the January of 2019. Verify showing all calculations whether this statement is correct. So firstly, let's start with the number that he gave us, the 4.2.3. The car is costing this, right, at the end of October. So we need to figure out what it is at the end of November and then the end of December, and that'll be our answer because the end of December is obviously the beginning of January. Okay, so you could be saying, well, why are you doing November? Well, what rates were we given here? We were given monthly rates. So we now need to calculus, calculate this using our monthly rates. So to get from October to December, you have to go through November. So we're going to use this inflation rate and that inflation rate. So we're going to say this amount here, we're going to times it by 2.18. And then over here, we're going to times by 1.91. Okay, so just be very careful there. Okay, so I'll show you the stepwise. You're probably like, oh, I'm a little bit confused here. Please remember that these are also percentages. I'm just writing these down because I know I'm going to use them. Okay, so let's start by doing end of October. So we're going to say 156831.36 and we're going to times it by 2.18 shift percent. So that is how much it would have gone up, right, because of inflation, just in the month of November. So we're going to write your end of November is going to be 156831.36 plus this increase in inflation. Okay, don't round it off yet, right? Put, just keep it like that. Add on the amount that it was originally, because that amount that we've just calculated is just the increase in inflation, so the total would be 160250.2836. Okay. Now we need to times that amount by that. Okay. So we're going to now say end of December. And we're going to say that amount, 160250.2836. We're going to times it by 1.91%. Put that into your calculator. And the amount that it would be would be 3060.780418. Don't round off. Okay. That is just the inflation, right? So it's not the full amount of the car. It's just the inflation, the same way that this amount was just inflation. Okay. So now we're going to say, right, this is just the inflation at end of December. Then at the end of December, in totality, right, is going to be. Um, the 160250.2836 plus 3060.780481. So the amount of the car at the end of November plus the inflation that it um, would be added to it for the month of December. Okay, so it's just literally, all you're doing is you're doing like a repeated calculation here. It's not a difficult one, right? So the full amount that he would pay, right, um, for a car would be this, right? Obviously, this is then equivalent to Australian dollars if we round it off correctly. Okay, that's how much it would be, right? So that's how much it would cost at the end of December or the beginning of January. Remember, we we um, say end of December is the same as the beginning of January. Okay, you could be saying, but what if I did it at the end of January? They would have to look at that. Um, because they didn't specify when in January, but generally if they don't specify, you assume the beginning, okay? Then it said, we're not done, because it said that he was talking about the inflation that would happen over this period. So the inflation that would happen would effectively be that amount plus that amount. So we need to add those two amounts together and see if it is this amount that he's saying, is right? Let's see. So these are the two inflation amounts. That's from November. That's from December, right? We need to add those together because that's how much inflation was earned over this period and see if it equaled 6,500 like he said it did. So put it in 3418.923648. If you'd stored your values, it would have made this calculation a little bit easier. But if you like, I don't need any more complicated sort of calculator work in my life, then you can just type it out the way that I have and you'll see that um, the total inflation would be 
Australian dollar. Remember your units, please. 6479.70. Okay, which we know is smaller than the 6,500 that he said it would be. It's close, but it's still smaller. Therefore, Kia Tumete is incorrect. Okay, so just to look at this calculation one more time, right? You could be saying, I think we did more calculation than we needed to, and we did to a degree, because all we really needed was these two amounts. So if you didn't put in these totals, that's okay, because we're only really looking at the inflation. So if you just looked at those, you added them together, and then got to your conclusion, you would have got all your marks. But importantly, you had to identify that you had to go through November to get to December. What some students would do here is they just go straight to December. But the nature of inflation is that you have to go through it in order to get to the next period. Okay, that is us done not only with this question, but with this paper. I hope that was helpful. I'm hoping to upload more papers in the next couple of weeks. But uh, good luck, and I hope that you um, feel more on top of your math lit work. Cheers.